Welcome to lesson four on chemical changes. In this lesson, we're going to be looking at extraction of metals. Before we begin, I'd like you to recap last week's content. So have a go at these questions here and then come back to check your answers. To begin with, we've got copper chloride reacting with magnesium. This is a displacement reaction, so magnesium will displace copper from copper chloride to form magnesium chloride and copper will be displaced and therefore on its own in the products. An explanation of why this reaction takes place is that magnesium is more reactive than copper, so magnesium will be able to displace the copper. Next up we've got a reaction which shouldn't occur. Aluminium nitrate plus zinc goes to make zinc nitrate plus aluminium. We're asked to explain why it doesn't happen. Well, zinc is actually less reactive than aluminium, so zinc would be unable to displace aluminium from aluminium nitrate. Finally, we've got to name these compounds. Cu stands for copper, and whenever you see CO3, you should write the word carbonate. So here we have copper carbonate. Mg is magnesium, and NO3 should be spotted as nitrate. So here we have magnesium nitrate. Finally, Fe is iron, and whenever you see SO4, you should say sulfate. So here we have iron sulfate. Have you ever considered where the metals that we've described in previous lessons actually come from? Most of these metals don't exist in their pure elemental form and they actually have to be extracted. However, there are some metals that are so low reactivity that they've never reacted with anything in the history of time and therefore we call these ones native metals. They include silver, gold and platinum. Silver, gold and platinum have such low reactivities that they would have never formed compounds and therefore they're found as the pure metals themselves just maybe stuck inside a piece of rock and as long as you break the waste rock away from them you've got the metal then you could melt it down and reshape it into an object. So we find these as elements and this is because their reactivity is so low that they would have never formed compounds. So there is no extraction needed for these metals. All you have to do is dig them up and separate the rock. However, most metals are found inside compounds, inside what we call ores. And the definition of an ore needs to be learned. It's a rock which contains enough of a metal for it to be economical to extract. What we mean by that is if you were to extract the metal and then sell it, you'd at least get a profit from doing so. So inside the ore, if you were to crush it and powder the ore up and then remove any of it that's just waste rock, then you would have a compound of the metal. For example, magnesium oxide or iron oxide or copper oxide. It's not the pure metal, it's the metal in a compound bonded with something else. So therefore, we're going to need to carry out a chemical process to obtain the elemental metal. And then we would go on to shape it into the everyday metal objects that you see. Now let's have a look at some examples of metals being extracted from their ores. Sylvite ore is an ore that contains potassium. And for it to be classified as an ore, it needs enough metal, potassium in this case, for it to be economic to extract. The first stage in the extraction process would be to crush and powder this ore, and then remove any waste rock. Then we'd be left with potassium chloride. However, our goal is to obtain pure potassium. And currently the potassium is bonded to chlorine in the form of a compound, potassium chloride. So it doesn't have the typical properties of a metal yet, in that it's not shiny, it doesn't conduct electricity whilst it's a solid, and the fact that it's not malleable, so it can't be formed into different shapes very easily. So we need to remove this chloride part of it so it becomes an element not a compound like it is at the moment. In order to do this, we're going to need to carry out chemical processes, which change it chemically. And then you'll be left with pure potassium, the elemental metal, with all of the desired properties of the metal that you wanted to extract. Another example would be hematite ore. This is an ore of iron. Again, we'd need to crush and powder the ore and then remove any waste rock. Then we'd be left with iron oxide, a compound of iron bonded to oxygen. Again, this doesn't quite have the properties of iron yet, 
When you normally consider iron, you think of a big girder of iron, or a, a, a spoon, or something made of iron in particular. However, this here is a brittle, orange-brownish powder that doesn't conduct electricity while solid, and has none of the other properties of iron. So therefore we need to remove the oxygen from it, so we've just got pure iron. So again, we're going to carry out some chemical processes, and then we'll be left without iron. So what we need to do now is look at what these chemical processes involve and be able to describe them and complete equations for them. In order to understand these chemical processes, we need to link it to the reactivity series of metals. And you may see here I've added two new elements to this reactivity series in italics. The first is carbon and the second is hydrogen. It's important to note that these are not metals, however they're put here for reference because they're used in some of the extraction processes. Also remember that we've got the native elements here, silver, gold and platinum, which require no chemical processes in order to extract. However, those less reactive than carbon, including zinc, iron, tin, lead, ignoring hydrogen because it's not a metal, and copper, do need to be extracted, and they can be extracted by a process called reduction with carbon. Let's have a look at how reduction with carbon works. Carbon will be able to displace elements less reactive than it from their oxides. Remember that some of the compounds found inside ores were metal oxides. What we do is heat the metal oxide with carbon and carbon dioxide and the pure metal are produced. So let's have a look at an equation for this. If you were to take copper oxide, the compound that's found inside copper ore, and you reacted it with carbon, then because carbon is more reactive than copper, carbon will be able to displace copper from copper oxide. We can see in the products that the carbon is now bonded with the oxygen that originally belonged to copper, and the copper is now on its own, it's been displaced. This is an example of reduction for two different reasons. The first reason that it's an example of reduction is that it involves the removal of oxygen. You can see to begin with the copper was bonded with oxygen and now it's not. So we can say copper has been reduced. However, this is also reduction because the copper has gained electrons. We'll look a little bit more at examples of the gain of electrons in later examples. But to summarize very simply, the copper is a 2 plus ion inside copper oxide to cancel out the 2 minus charge of the oxygen. Whereas whenever anything's an element, it has a zero charge. So therefore it's gone from 2 plus to zero, so therefore it must have gained two negatives. Now let's have a look at another example. If you were to take lead oxide and react it with carbon, let's compare the reactivities. Carbon is more reactive than lead, so carbon is able to displace lead from its oxide. So therefore, this reaction will produce carbon dioxide, where the carbon is now bonded to the oxygen that originally belonged to lead, because it's more reactive, and lead has been displaced. Here's a symbol equation for this process, balancing to form CO2 and lead. And we can explain it because carbon is more reactive than lead, so is able to displace it. But remember, we call this process reduction now for two different reasons. The first reason that it's reduction is that it involves the removal of oxygen. See how lead here had oxygen, but it no longer does in the products. And the second reason is that it's the gain of electrons, because lead in lead oxide has a 2 plus charge, whereas when it's pure lead, it has a zero charge. So to get from two positives to zero, you would have to use two minuses, two negatives, and electrons are negative, so it's gained electrons. We could explain this using something called a half equation. Lead has gone from lead two plus ions, and it's gained two negative electrons, and now it's just lead with no overall charge. So therefore it's reduction as well, because it's gained electrons. Let's have a look at another example. Tin oxide plus carbon goes to make carbon dioxide plus tin. Well, carbon is more reactive than tin. So therefore, we can say that carbon is able to displace tin. And again, it's reduction, because if you have a look at the tin here, it's bonded to oxygen, 
but if you have a look at it here, it's had its oxygen removed. So it's had oxygen removed, so it's reduction, and if we look at the charges of the ions, well, tin is a four plus ion, but then when it's an element, it has a zero charge. So therefore, it's gained four negative electrons. We could explain this again using a half equation. Tin four plus plus four negative electrons goes to make tin. Let's have a look at a final example. Iron oxide plus carbon goes to make carbon dioxide plus iron. Here's the symbol equation. And we can see that carbon is more reactive than iron. So carbon will be able to displace iron. So we can see that the carbon is now bonded with the oxygen that originally belonged to the iron. And we can see that the iron has been displaced. But with these particular examples with the reaction with carbon, we call this reduction instead of displacement. And this is reduction for two reasons. First of all, if we look at the iron in the reactants versus the product, it's had its oxygen removed. And then secondly, if we consider the charge of the iron from start to finish, well, it's gained electrons because iron has a three plus charge here. I'm told this by the iron three in the name. And then when it's an element, it has a zero charge. So the half equation would look like this. Iron three plus plus three electrons goes to make iron. We can see here it's gaining electrons and therefore it's also reduction for that secondary reason. What I'd like you to do now is pause the video and have a look at the supplied questions. Try and answer them and then come back to check your answers. One, metals can be found inside rocks called ores, which contain enough metal for it to be economic to extract or economical. You could also say profitable there. The metals that are found as native elements all have low reactivity and they include silver, gold and platinum. Metals that are less reactive than carbon can be extracted using reduction with carbon. Reduction involves heating the metal oxide in a furnace with carbon. The carbon is able to remove the oxygen and it forms carbon dioxide. And this reduces the metal forming the pure metal. Let's complete the generic word equation for reduction. You take a metal oxide and react it with carbon. And as long as that metal is less reactive than carbon, then you will get carbon dioxide and the metal. The two meanings of the word reduction are the removal of oxygen or the gain of electrons. Now let's complete these word equations. Zinc oxide plus carbon would make carbon dioxide plus zinc. Iron oxide plus carbon would again make carbon dioxide, but this time plus iron. In order to form carbon dioxide and tin, you'd need to react tin oxide with carbon. In order to extract lead from lead oxide, you'd need to react it with carbon and the byproduct would be carbon dioxide. And then finally, in order to obtain copper, you'd need to react copper oxide with carbon. The carbon is more reactive than copper, so would remove the oxygen to form carbon dioxide. Now let's try to balance these symbol equations, or fill in the gap to add the missing formula. To begin with, for A, you should have got two zinc oxides plus carbon goes to make carbon dioxide plus two zincs. For the next one, you should have got two iron oxides plus three carbons goes to make three carbon dioxides plus four ions. In the next one, we're trying to make tin. And earlier I gave you the formula of tin oxide to be SNO2. We can see the rest of the equation is balanced if we write the formula as such. In the next example, we're trying to make lead. And we can see that we're missing a formula here as well. We should have got two lead plus carbon goes to make carbon dioxide and two lead. Finally, we've got copper oxide. Let's balance this one. You should have got two copper oxides plus one carbon, or you could have just left that gap blank, goes to make carbon dioxide plus copper, two of them. Finally, this reaction below does not occur. Use the reactivity series to explain why. Well, if we compare carbon with aluminium on the reactivity series, carbon is actually less reactive than aluminium. So it would be unable to displace the aluminium and therefore also unable to reduce it. So we can say, Carbon is less reactive than aluminium, which means that it cannot displace aluminium from its oxide. 
so it cannot reduce it by removing the oxygen. So this reaction would never get to the products in the first place. Name the method used to extract the metals that are more reactive than carbon. Well, I haven't covered this one yet, but if you're more reactive than carbon, you can't be extracted using carbon, so we need to use a process called electrolysis. Now let's summarise what we've learned today. The least reactive metals are called native metals, and these are found as pure elements in nature. The only extraction that's necessary is to separate them from the rock. They don't require any chemical processes because they don't form compounds, and they don't form these compounds because they've got such a low reactivity. Metals that are less reactive than carbon are extracted using reduction with carbon, where we heat them up inside a furnace with carbon, and the carbon is able to remove the oxygen. So remember that reduction is the removal of oxygen, but it's also the gain of electrons. And then finally, those metals that are more reactive than carbon need to be extracted using a process called electrolysis. We'll look at electrolysis a little bit more in future lessons, but essentially the idea is you can't react them with carbon because carbon's less reactive than them, so would be unable to displace them. Thanks very much for watching today's lesson, and this concludes the part of chemistry that you're going to be doing during your home learning series. So, I wish you well in your next unit. Thanks very much.